A-level results are down on last year. Well, it's not surprising because, um, as your correspondent just said, the results were inflated last year because they were assessed uh, by teachers um, who are obviously going to uh, be as generous as possible, more generous than an exam board um, when it comes to awarding grades. So they're returning to where they were. But that doesn't mean that um, children in Scotland shouldn't feel hard done by. The real problem, I think, from the point of view of this year's A-level cohort in Scotland is that because last year many students did much better than anticipated, many more students met the conditional offers they were made by universities in Scotland. So universities were suddenly um, uh, had a problem, which is we've got a lot of kids, we've got more kids than there are places. So they encouraged a lot of kids to defer their places, which means there are fewer places uh, at Scottish universities this year, which means it's going to be harder for this A-level cohort to get into universities to meet their conditional offers than it was for the kids last year. So it's a kind of, uh, it's the long tail of the damage done by closing schools um, and disrupting children's education during the pandemic. Isn't it? And the frustration, Toby, for people like you and I is that this was always going to be inevitable. This does not come as a surprise that lockdown policy, particularly school closures, has a long tail. Do you, like me, fear that we're only just scratching the surface of what the implications will be for these young people in the next 10 years? I'm afraid I do. Um, all the research into the impact of school closures on children's education suggests that it's going to be far more disruptive than even you and I anticipated two years ago, uh, two and a half years ago. Um, uh, the research suggests that it's going to have a long term damaging effect and um, the children are going to be the children who, whose education has been disrupted over the past two and a half years are going to be permanently disadvantaged by that. Um, and I think that's a really important consideration uh, when we think about whether we're ever going to lock down again in response to a similar viral outbreak. Um, in Sweden, of course, they um, uh, didn't shut schools in anything like the same way we did here. So children's education in Sweden has been much less disrupted. In Denmark, where they did initially close schools, the Prime Minister of Denmark quite quickly recognised that that was a mistake, reopened schools and apologised to parents and children in Denmark for closing schools. It would be nice if one day um, our government apologised to parents and children for disrupting their education. For what we can see now is uh, largely pointless reasons. There was no benefit to shutting schools. It didn't seem to interrupt transmission of the virus at all. It just damaged children's education.